so glad you joined us. I'm Julie Bumgardner, and this is Julie B TV. Welcome to this episode of Julie B TV. I can't even tell you how excited I am about this. I talk with people all the time about bringing families together, blending them, are they stepping together, and just the challenges that are faced in that whole process. And I always recommend this book called The Smart Step Family, written by a longtime friend of mine, Ron Deal. And I am beyond excited because he is like, right here, live and in person with us today to talk with us about this parenting journey in the step family process, which can be convoluted, complicated, all kinds of things. So welcome. I'm so excited you. you are here. Thank you, Julie. It's a, you're a great friend, and it's an honor to be with you today. I was thinking as we were preparing to talk that I think we've known each other for almost two decades, mm -hmm. which is a really long time. It's amazing you still hang around. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I really do. <laughs> you, you are doing great things. Mm -hmm. I can remember meeting you probably 1998, 99. Mm -hmm. And to think about what has happened between then yeah. and now, you are world renowned mm -hmm. for your work with step families and helping people to look at these challenges and figure out how to walk through them. And that's really where I want our focus to be today is helping people figure out and know mm -hmm. perhaps this is normal and here are some things that you can do to to walk through. So we could begin in a million different directions, but okay. since you talk with people all the time, let's let's <clears throat> talk with just the about the common struggles that parents face as they try to figure out this whole situation of parenting yours, mine, ours. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's interesting. Um, there's a name, a sociologist you'll probably recognize, Andrew Sherlin. He's a, he's a yes. world-renowned sociologist. Right. He made a statement one time about step families. He said they are an incomplete institution. Now, what he meant by that was that there's not a generally held understanding of how you do step family mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Like people don't walk into it. It'd be, it'd be like if I said to you, if you've never ridden a motorcycle before, you've driven a car your whole life, but if you've never ridden a motorcycle. And I said, now just go out there and hop on that thing and go. Well, you might want a little direction. You might want a little, you, you maneuver that vehicle so differently than yeah. a car, right? It takes balance, coordination, you lean, and that helps make it turn. You know, you don't do that in a car. There's so many little elements. It's the same, but it's very different. It's like coming in in the middle, almost. Exactly, yeah. and blended family life is just like that. It's the same, and it's very different. And it's the differences that make it challenging. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing about Andrew Sherlin's statement. Step families are an incomplete institution. He said that over 40 years ago. Mm. And still, if you walked out today and asked yeah. the average person, do you know what the difference is between being a parent and a step parent? Most people can't tell you. They, they can't describe that. They can't, and, and then all of a sudden you get thrown in as a step parent into that job. <sighs> It's a little unnerving, right? And it's hard and there's yeah. challenges and it's the differences. It's the same, it's still parenting, and yet it's different in some significant ways that throw people off. And that's what we help folks understand is, yeah. is what's going on with your family? What's your role? What's not your role? How do you work together as a parent, biological parent, and as a step parent to help the kids? Because really that's what everybody wants. Yeah, and I think that that part in and of itself is so challenging because you have great people, well-meaning people yes. who yes. will say, I think I'm doing a really good job yeah. with my children, but my stepchildren mm -hmm. are driving me yeah. insane. Yeah, it's a totally, I feel like a failure. It's a totally different dynamic. And by the way, that's a very common experience. If you have your own children, you've been a biological parent for a few years, maybe many years, maybe you're later in life, you've raised them, they're mm -hmm. out of the home, and now you have stepchildren that are still in the home, and you think it's just going to be the same, but it's a it different vehicle. Yeah. And you have to learn how to drive that vehicle, otherwise you fall over. <laughs> so tell us, what, what are some things that people who find themselves mm -hmm. in this situation need to know and to be thinking about as they mm -hmm. engage? 
Well, let me tell you a little bit of a backstory. Uh, Gary Chapman, a uh, yes, friend of ours, wrote friend. a very significant book, The Five Love Languages. Yes. It's been translated all over the world mm-hmm. multiple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, he and I are now writing a Five Love Languages book for blended families. Oh, I love and it. Here, here's why. Because the, the notion of loving somebody and speaking their language assumes one big factor. It assumes the other person wants you to speak their language. I mean, think about that. Boy, that is true. It's never really said, but it's assumed. Now, husband, here's your wife's love language. This will help her feel your love in significant ways. Well, that assumes she wants to feel that. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, if you have a child, hey, learn your child's love language. This helps you really connect to their heart and, and, and increases your leadership ability with your child. It assumes the child wants to hear it. But what if you're a stepparent? <laughs> I didn't ask to be in this situation. <laughs> That's exactly right. And you're, you, you may even know your stepchild's love language. It doesn't mean they mm-hmm. want you to speak it. Yeah. And oh, so what do you do? That's hard. See, here's that's a very significant difference, right, between being a parent and a step-parent. You can try. You can be well-intentioned. You can be doing everything right. But if the child goes, you know what, I, you're a nice person. Thank you for being in my life, and I appreciate all you do for me. But I have a mom. Mm-hmm. You as my stepmom, I don't really need you to mm-hmm. love me in that way. Mm-hmm. What then does the stepmom do? Boy, that's a dynamic. <laughs> it is. It's you know, and that's where that frustration comes mm-hmm. in. And so one of the things we help people understand is that you have to pace with the child. If they are open to you and say, Stepmom, you're my mom, I love you like crazy, hugs, kisses, um, you know, you are in my you're in my heart, then go for it. Absolutely. Some step parents, that's their experience. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, most step parents, you know, discover that it's their willingness to love the child is greater than the child's willingness to be loved by them or to love in return. Yeah. And so you have to meet them where they are. You know, I say to step parents this, like if I give you an assignment and I say, I want you to go out and make a new friend today, you know, maybe it's a new coworker, maybe it's a new neighbor that's down the road. You've never had a conversation with your new neighbor. How would you go about that? Well, what you wouldn't do <laughs> is you wouldn't go knock on their front door. When they answer, you wouldn't give them a bear hug. <laughs> you wouldn't say, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, hugs and kisses. Like they would yeah. be calling the cops on right, you, right? Yeah. They don't want that from mm-hmm. you. you what, so what do you do? You have to pace a friendship according to how the other person's openness to you. It's the same idea yeah. for step parents. So on day one, <laughs> you have to gently knock. See if they open the door, and if they do, maybe they crack the door open, and yeah. they're like, "Yeah, I'm not sure about you." Well, then all you can do is talk through the door, crack in the door, like that's all you can do. You can be a decent person, you can still be kind on the outside, but you're not welcomed into their living room yet. Yeah. So you have to pace, and if you have that a strategy within you then your expectations come down. You're not mm-hmm. disappointed all the time. Right, yeah. Then you, you also re- relax a little bit about yourself. You know, I think a lot of step parents are so well-intentioned. They're so eager to do good by the child. Mm-hmm. And then the child doesn't really let them. Yeah. And they feel like, I'm a failure. Well, really, you're exactly where you need to be, making yeah. that friendship yeah. as it is. Yeah. And, and what we trust is that over time, the door opens wider and wider and wider. And then ultimately you might get welcomed into the living room of that child's heart. Let's go back to that over time Mm. because (laughs) I hear a lot of parents, especially struggle with, it's been a year and a half. Mm. It's been four years Mm -hmm. and we still, when you talk about stepping together, that would not be us. Mm -hmm. And it's so frustrating to me. And I know that, you know, it's different for the different ages, but can you speak to that? Yeah, let's talk around it because it depends on child circumstances, Mm -hmm. age, a lot Mm -hmm. of things. But here's the bottom line principle. Again, you're pacing with the child, their level of motivation to receive your love and love you in return varies. They have to find their own motivation. Let's just say your stepchild is 30 years old, has a spouse and two kids of their own and a mortgage. Um, you know, their level of motivation, the, how much time they have to invest in this new friendship mm-hmm. is very low, mm-hmm. right? Uh, now, they may like you, honor you, appreciate who you are, thanks for loving my mom, you know, whatever the case is, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean they need you in that intimate place in their heart. Mm-hmm. 
if they're 15 and they're a teenager <laughs> and they got friends and social media and all kinds of things that they really want to be invested in, again, their motivation toward you could far be less than you would hope it would be. Um, five-year-olds tend to be highly motivated to love the adults in their world, yeah. and they're very open to them. And so if you're a step-parent and you've just walked on the scene of a five-year-old, you may find out in six months things are peachy keen yeah. and moving and grooving. That 15-year-old, probably a few years. That 30-year-old, you're never going to be more than a friend. Mm -hmm. And so your expectations have to line up with the child, the circumstances. And if that's not confusing enough, let's say you have three stepchildren, two of them are really young and they're very open to you, and one of them's not. Yeah. So if you walk into the kitchen in the morning and you get hugs and kisses from a couple and the other one kind of says, talk to the hand, like, I just don't need you, <laughs> right? It, that's confusing for step parents. Mm -hmm. That is a challenge. And oh, by the way, their spouse, the biological parent, walks into that same kitchen and gets hugs and kisses from everybody. Like, yeah. th th there's a different level of connection within the same home. Yeah. Well, let's just get even stickier. Okay. And let's talk about discipline. Because mm. <clears throat> that's a flashpoint. For sure. It is. Yes. And really, uh, the bottom line here, again, we're going to go back to that pace principle, and it's pace with how much authority they're willing to give you. Th there's a term that uh, Susan Gamash, a researcher, introduced called parental status when, she, when talking about parenting and step-parenting. Mm -hmm. And I think it really fits here. Step-parents, your status is somewhere between what you think it should be <laughs> and what and the what, child yeah. will allow it to be, yeah. right? Um, you should have at least the ability to get things done, get the dishes emptied out of the dishwasher, get the trash taken out of. Any adult parent figure can get that done, hopefully, in a household, just because you're an adult. It, it's not because I love you, necessarily. It's just because Dad told me, you, stepmom, are, can tell me to take out the trash, mm -hmm. and I should do it. So I'm kind of doing it because of Dad, kind of doing it because of you, but you get the trash taken out. Mm -hmm. Taking out the trash because I adore you, <laughs> because <laughs> I respect you, that's a totally different level of uh, of relationships. Mm -hmm. So again, you have to pace with what you can do. So what we generally encourage step parents, the model we help them think through is, all right, you're going to grow your authority as your relationship grows over time. In the beginning, realize you're like a babysitter. You're, you're the person standing in for Which dad. I think that makes the hair on the back of the neck go up. It does, yeah. right? I mean, there's something visceral about that mm -hmm. that says, I no, wait a minute. I'm more than mm -hmm. that. I'm paying mm -hmm. for a lot. I'm doing the mm -hmm. laundry. I'm cooking. And I'm, and I'm married, too. And I'm married, you're too. You're a parent. Yeah. yeah, but in the child's eyes, <laughs> right. here's the deal, right? Mm -hmm. um, another analogy is a teacher. My wife's a teacher on the first day of school. She teaches kindergartners right now, by the way, and they fall in love with her fast because mm -hmm. they're young age. Mm -hmm. Other teachers are teaching sixth graders or eighth graders or... Not so much. Not so much, yeah. right? And so on the first day of school, the teacher's still in charge. You're an authority to a degree. Respect that the limits of your authority. Mm -hmm. Work within that range of authority, but don't try to be mom. Yeah. Those are two different things. Yeah. I think children need that respect from you. Yeah. In the meantime, somebody's got to get the kid out of bed. Somebody's got to make sure we, we know you're not going to that party. Somebody's got to deal with the social media and how much screen time they have. Who does the hard work of parenting while the step parent is trying to build a friendship and build a relationship? The biological parent has to do yeah. their job. Yeah. So really, Julie, listen to that. It's a combination. It's not just who the step-parent is. It's who the biological parent is as the support, as the mm -hmm. back, as the person who deals with their child around the harder things in parenting. Yeah. The step-parent is buying time. As the relationship grows and deepens, that your authority begins to elevate. And then you're more parental, yeah. right? So it's a process working together as a team while the step parent is moving into that space, you know, just in my head, I'm sitting here thinking about in companies we always talk about teams form, mm. storm, norm, and then perform, yeah. and it it is almost like that it in is. a step family situation that you, you it just takes time mm -hmm. to earn trust and respect and credibility. It just it's not just handed over to yeah, you. Yeah, that's a really good analogy. And if you think about it another way, the new guy on staff is not the director. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> Generally speaking, that person is part of the team. They have some responsibility. They, they do get some things done, but somebody else is in charge. There's a supervisor, director, yeah. somebody. And you work your way up the ladder yeah. in business, and yeah. you become the director. Mm -hmm. Similarly, mm -hmm. a step-parent is working their way up in terms of mm -hmm. the relationship with the child, gaining more. Here's a word we haven't said, trust. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a child, whether you're 30 or 15 or three, you have to trust your caregiver to give them your heart. Yeah. And trust takes time. You can't just demand it. Well, and this makes me think about sometimes we may not understand as a step parent that if a parent walked out mm -hmm. and just left, mm -hmm. Uh, or even if something tragic happened and they passed away, yeah. there can be abandonment mm -hmm. issues and a real anxiety around mm -hmm. giving you my heart because I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that takes time. I've long said a child who says to a step parent, you're not my dad, you can't tell me what to say, is telling you about their sadness. Mm -hmm. Yes, they don't want this person giving me orders to clean my room. I don't want to clean my room. Yes, that's true. And it's also true that what I really want is for my dad to be here. Mm -hmm. And so the sadness, as you just pointed out, the loss from what's happened in the past. Where's dad? How involved is dad? Is he yeah. a daily person in the li child's life? Is he sporadic? Is he missing? Whatever that story is, it matters. Right. It affects the step parent's ability yeah. to come on the scene and ask him to clean his room. Mm -hmm. um, so, by the way, well, what should a step parent do in that situation? I, th I think you respond in two ways. Number one, you say, well, you, you do have to clean your room. That's what everybody does here. Mm. That's the household rule. Mm -hmm. I have to clean mine. You have yeah. to clean yours. Yeah. End of story. Oh, by the way, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if you'd like to talk to your dad. You know, uh, uh, is there, you, you try to acknowledge the sadness as well as deal with the behavioral issue of the moment. Mm -hmm. um, both of those things matter. Yeah. What you don't do is, if I can put it politely, wimp out. Mm -hmm. What you don't do is go, oh, I know, you've had it rough. <clears throat> you don't have to clean your room. I'll do it for you. No, you don't do that because that just makes sadness a good manipulative tool for kids. Yeah. They don't need to learn that no. lesson. But what you do need to do is be compassionate around that sadness, but then go ahead and push through gently to get the, the task done, whatever it needs to be. Yeah. So, but this loss thing you bring up is really, really significant. It is always just under the surface for, for kids in particular, uh, but I think even for adults, but in particular around parenting issues, it's always there somewhere. Which makes me think about another piece that I think is closely related to that, and it's um, when rules are one way at one house mm. and they're a different way at mm. another house mm -hmm. or a parent that is either of the parents are just uncooperative, don't keep their word when they say they're coming to visit or pick the child up, they're not. Mm -hmm. And then you get left holding that bag of disappointment and sadness and the acting out that comes from that, right. what, hmm. what can parents do with that? Because I think the, temp the real temptation is just to talk about, well, and that's why we're not married anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, and, and criticize the, mm -hmm. other, the other parent in front yeah. of the child. Right. Right, no, 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 you're right, let that go. That, that's, you say that in private <laughs> to mm, other adults. To, to a supportive adult that can help exactly. you process that, that. That's not something your child needs to hear. Their longing is for that parent. It doesn't help if you throw salt on that wound. I, I, I think your leftover holding the bag is a really hard thing. That's a sadness. That's a loss issue. You've got to bring it up. You've got to talk about it. You don't just say, eh, it's okay. You know, it'll be all right. They'll show up one day. They've don't, never been responsible. Yeah, don't no. you know, don't make promises. You know, you, you know the other person's not going to keep. Yeah. Instead, hug your child and go, oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, I hate this for you. I know this hurts. You want to see your dad, whatever, dad or mom, whatever the case is. You want to see him, and you miss him, and it, and you should. And I hope and pray that he comes back into your life. 
we're going to leave that door open whatever we can. I am so sorry. Give me a hug. Uh, you know, sometimes I say, here's a good analogy. When your kids were three, four years of age and they were walking down the street and they trip and fall and skin their knee, what do you do? Well, you pick them up. Yeah. Lots of TLC at that moment in time. You hug them. You hold them. You kiss the boo-boo. You get a Band-Aid. Have you fixed the wound? No. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's going to be a number of days before that thing is really not raw anymore and it, yeah. it gets better. But somehow, TLC really helps. Yeah. So hugging the hurt is what we have to do. Now, here's the reality. Parents will say, yeah, but I'm hugging that hurt day after day after day. I know. It's, I know. It gets old and, and, and it's hard. And yeah. you feel like you're doing nothing. Mm -hmm. But you are. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you, no, you can't fix it. It's not within your power. But yes, you can hug that hurt over and over and over. And really what you're doing is you're helping your child as you talk, as you dialogue, as you hug, you're helping your child cope with their own loss, learn how to deal with sadness, put words on their sadness, yes. and it helps move them through. See, our task when it comes to this sort of thing is to not fix, not repair, we can't, but to help move them through. Mm -hmm. And it feels like not much, but it really is a lot. You're preparing them to deal with life. Yeah. Mercy. These, yeah. these are good words mm. and great points. And I thank you so much mm. for being with us on this episode. Rich, really, yeah. really rich. Thanks thank for you. having me. Boy, uh, a lot to take in. I hope you'll listen to this more than once because uh, there's, there's some really great nuggets in here about how to help your family move forward in the process of, of being healthy and thriving. Want to be the first to know when new episodes get released? Hit the subscribe button now. Which is right here. Down here. Where is it? Seriously? <laughs>